We followed the mystery religion from Babylon through Egypt and seen the struggle between good and evil as it threatened to contaminate God's chosen people in Israel. We've seen how God kept showing the Israelites that he was their God and to stay with him and how he even went as far as to defeat Baal in a direct confrontation to prove his point in front of the whole nation. The Jews, however, just couldn't seem to stay on course for very long and they kept sliding away into paganism. Satan had had enough of Plan A tactics by this point and he instead switched to Plan B. Babylon invaded the nation of Israel, laid siege to Jerusalem, sacked the city and destroyed the temple. God let this happen as a means of disciplining his people and had even forewarned the Jews that it would happen through the prophet Jeremiah. Even when Satan appears to be winning, God is always in control. This period of Babylonian history is known as the Neo-Babylonian period and it was the one that largely belonged to King Nebuchadnezzar II. Around 610 BC, Nebuchadnezzar was a ranking staff officer within the Babylonian army who oversaw the restoration of the Temple of Marduk, King of Gods, in the Babylonian pantheon. He then rose to power around 604 BC and set about expanding the empire by conquest. He embarked on a number of campaigns to subdue and conquer surrounding nations, and it was in 590 BC that he attacked Jerusalem. From this victory, he took around 10,000 captives back with him to Babylon, but these were only those that were considered useful. He took the young men, the princes, the best soldiers, the craftsmen and the smiths. The rest were left behind. Perhaps the most famous of these young men taken to Babylon were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah. They were to go through three years of training in an education program that would indoctrinate them with Babylonian ideas to make them useful to the empire. To help assimilate them into their new culture and to help swerve their allegiance away from God to the Babylonian gods, they were all given new names. The name Daniel, which means God is my judge, became Belshazzar, which means Bel or Baal, protect his life. Hananiah, which means the Lord shows grace, became Shadrach, which means under the command of Aku. Mishael, which means who is like God, became Meshach, which means who is like Aku. And Azariah, which means the Lord helps, became Abednego, which means servant of Nego, who is God of learning. It was also upon Nebuchadnezzar's return to Babylon at the end of these campaigns that he built this monument called the Ishtar Gate. It was at the entrance to his great city and is the name by which Astarte or Asherah had come to be known in Babylon at the time. On it were 337 images of dragons. 337 in pagan numerology represents hell. So this gate to Babylon is literally meant to be, in a sense, the gate to hell. Remember this monument because it still exists in a museum in Berlin, Germany, and we'll be discussing it when we get around to the 20th century. Now, as Daniel records in his book of the Bible, Nebuchadnezzar attempted to force Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego to worship as Babylonian gods. The three young men at this point give one of the most stirring speeches in the Bible and one which conveys the exact same attitude of defiance that we need to foster today. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. When they refused, they were thrown into the fiery furnace. Again we see the recurring theme of fire as the preferred form of sacrifice to Baal because he was the sun god. However, while in the furnace, they are met by someone who is generally accepted to be a pre-incarnate Jesus and they come out unharmed. Therefore, once again, 
God shows his power over satanic idols, and this had the ironic effect of making a believer out of Nebuchadnezzar. Whoever would have thought that there would be a day when a Babylonian king would worship God. The key event for us, however, as we continue our journey through this time, is Nebuchadnezzar's prophetic dream and Daniel's interpretation of it in chapter 2.